Hey, party people. People who love to party. It's me, Mr. Bill. I'm here to talk with you today about graphing hyperbolas. You may be thinking to yourself because you're an astute individual who knows certain things about what we've done in class already. Hey, didn't we already graph hyperbolas? Well, yeah, we did. Back when we were doing rational functions, we have graphed hyperbolas. And this guy right here, this what's that question, that is a rational function. That is going to yield us a hyperbola. So let's go ahead and make a t-chart, even though we don't tend to make a t-chart for these for a couple of different reasons. First reason is, the first point that you would think of that definitely goes in this, the three, five, you know, our vertex point on most things is actually not even on this graph. Over three, up five, that is where our vertical and horizontal asymptotes meet. So those are the two lines where our graph is going to get infinitely close to them, but not necessarily touch them. Although in some other functions they do. We're then going to move over just one to each side. So we're going to plug in four. We're going to plug in two. We're going to see what happens. Four minus three, plug it right in there. You get one. One divided by one is one. Two times one is two. Two plus five makes seven. So this is all the way up here at four comma seven. Over here, two, we plug that in for the X. I've got one over two minus three, which makes negative one. One divided by negative one is negative one. Two times negative one is negative two. Negative two plus five makes three. So that's two, three. I know sometimes you guys say I go a little bit too fast, but we've done this already. So the next part was if we don't have a point at the over one, up one from the meeting place of our asymptotes. So if we don't have a point right there, then we know that this point, because these hyperbolas are so symmetrical, actually gets mirrored over. So this over one, up two that it did, we can flip those around and go over two, up one. Same thing for this. This went left one, down two. That means I could go left two, down one, and get the mirrored point for that. Ding. These are the simplest form of hyperbolas, which is why we start with them. And they come from rational functions. They have horizontal and vertical asymptotes, but they themselves are kind of diagonals. Now, when we do them as conic sections, that kind of gets turned on its head. We're going to graph these like we graphed ellipses. So I'm going to graph the center, and I'm going to graph what well, on an ellipse would be the vertex and the covertex, or vertices and covertices. Our center is going to be at negative 2, 4. So we want to put that point down. Negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, right there. Now, to get our vertices, at least what they were when, we, when they were ellipses, I'm not sure that that's what they're called uh, for hyperbolas. I'll look it up by the next time I do a video. Um, let's see. We would be moving over, it looks like we need to move over three, because this is our a squared or b squared, and we would need to square root that. So over three to the left and the right, since it's the x's, that means three left and right. And then on the y's, we're going to need to move five, because the square root of 25 is five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Right there. Then, instead of making our normal ellipse potato up in here, we're going to make a rectangle out of this. And these dots will be the middle of the sides of the rectangle. Now, that's kind of a lot to think about, and there's a lot of words, but, but watch. We're just going to go straight down from this until we get to the same level as the other dot. Then we're going to go towards it. Ding. See how that made a nice little edge there instead of a round edge? Gonna do the same thing we're going to the right until we get to the same level as that other dot and then we're going to go bam towards it ding i went a little bit too far but you know what i'm saying we're just edging this thing off to make a rectangle all around it rectangle rectangle with these dots in the center of those sides of the rectangle now we're going to join the diagonals and the center and what we're making here, these are going to be straight lines. These straight lines, notice how they're dashed. That's because they are going to be our asymptotes. Now our asymptotes 
are diagonal, which means our hyperbola, instead of being diagonal, is going to need to either be side to side or up and down. And this hyperbola is side to side. Its middles are right here, ding. This point we actually get to include in our graph. And it stretches out. It's trying to touch those sides. It's trying to touch the asymptotes, but it can never quite get there. Although, again, some other functions actually cross it, and they just keep crossing over and over again. <clears throat> Pardon me. There we go. There's the graph. Now for this graph, the thing that's graph, the thing that's the hyperbola. The hyperbola is not the box. The hyperbola is not these asymptotes. It's these curves right here. We could get rid of all the rest of the stuff and just graph the curves, and those would be hyperbolas. So what's this stuff doing on our graph? Helping us graph the hyperbola. All of this is just to help us out. Okay, let's try it one more time. We've got a lot of examples on this particular one because I know this is going to be a little bit weird for you. So let's make it like it's an ellipse, like we're going to graph our little potato. We're going to start with a center at, it looks like the center is going to be three, two. One, two, three, one, two, ding. We're going to move over four on the x's because the square root of 16 is four. We're going to be moving, looks like we're going to move two on the y's because the square root of four is two. Oh, and then I got to make the box. Yay, box. Making a box, making box. Yeah, look at that box. Heck yeah. Now I get to make the asymptotes. Take my straight edge. I would highly advise you get yourself a straight edge. All right, and then we finally, after all this, get to draw the hyperbolas. There we go. Again, guys, the only part of this graph that's hyperbola are those two little curves. All the rest of this stuff is just helping us put those on the graph in the correct way. So. I'm going to pause it now, and you've got a question that you need to ask for me or answer for me. Uh, how can you tell these hyperbolas apart from ellipses? Both look at the picture and look at the equation. Tell me what you get. We're going to take a short break. You know, just let me gather myself. Just let me put myself together. Although I'm looking pretty good right now. Hmm. I'm back. All right. So you probably didn't need all that much time. Maybe a minute, maybe two. But if I'm going to give you that time, I'd like you to write down what you think the deal is. So how can you tell them apart from ellipses? Well, first of all, it should be pretty obvious. The graph, instead of ellipses, which would be inside of this rectangle, we are only dealing with stuff on the outside of our rectangle. Ooh, outside. The other part is with the equations. And this is the super important part. Did you notice that if you look back at ellipses, Ellipses are always adding between the two fractions, whereas hyperbolas are always subtracting. Or if you prefer hyperbolae, just another way to pluralize that. So that's the big important part. You're going to get conic sections on a test where it's going to say, graph this or find all the important pieces. You have to be able to identify just with the equation which one it's talking about and what pieces you need to get. Now we're not talking about hyperbola pieces yet because we really still need to get all the ins and outs of graphing this. So next question, it says the other direction. What does that mean? Hmm, maybe Mr. Beale is insane. Our center is gonna be at two comma one. Mr. Beale, that's not what I got, I got one comma two. Well, you're insane. 
it's going to be two comma one because this is y right here and this is x Ooh, switched it up on you didn't i two one let's see our y's are going to have an up and down of two because the square root of four is two and our x's are going to have a side to side of seven Now we're going to make ourselves that rectangle. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Rectangle time. Rectangle is really, really helpful. It's also the reason why I teach graphing these before I teach anything else. Because graphing them is kind of simple and it matches other stuff that we've done, like with the circles and ellipses. We'll have to deal with the parts of hyperbolas next, and that will make you crazy. Maybe. Maybe it'll be great because I teach so well and I deserve a raise and possibly a statue of a cobra made out of solid gold and diamonds. There we go. Now, since we've got our asymptotes and we've got the point that it's definitely going to touch, we now need to graph them. We graph our two hyperbolas. Here's one swoop, swoop, super wide hyperbolas this time. And here's the other, soup, soup. I know what some of you are thinking, but Mr. Bill, you're supposed to put it right here on this side. No, I'm not. The Y came first. And when Y comes first, you graph them up and down instead of side to side. You notice how I didn't pause during this problem and ask you to do it. And it says example right here, because I'm going to show you. I just showed you. If Y comes before that minus sign, up and down. If X comes before the minus sign, side to side. Always diagonal asymptotes with positive and negative slopes. Okay, let's try it again. Our center is going to be at, I know someone's looking at this, it's negative five zero. Ooh, got you again. You got that smooth brain. Zero, negative five. One, two, three, four, five. Our Y's are gonna go up and down by three. One, two, three. One, a two, a three. And our x's are going to move over by ones on either side. One and one. Look at that baby little rectangle. That's a tiny one. Okay, let's make our sweet, sweet asymptotes. It sounded gross. I apologize. There we go. And then Y came first. These are going up and down. So super skinny, super pinched in there. Oh no, we can't get out. Yeah, you can just keep traveling. Well, actually, no, you'll never get out. They're asymptotes. You're never going to get past them. <laughs> All right. So we've got the side to side. We've got the up and down. What about this clouded figure right here? What about when it's all jumbled up? It's not in the right form. Well, we go back to completing the square. That's why I did a whole video on completing the squares because we're gonna to need to use it. So let's use it. First of all, we need to group together our X's and our Y's and move over to the other side, our ones. So we're gonna rewrite this as 25 X squared. Looks like it's gonna be minus 200 X. Just moving this guy over here. Negative Y squared minus four Y plus 379 is equal to eight. Okay, so let's minus that 379 from both sides. Get out of here. It's negative 371. Ugh, okay, I might have messed this up. Um, let's find out though. And negative, we're going to pull out that negative from the y squared and the 4y. We've got y squared plus 4y in a space. Over here, we've got 25. We're going to pull out that 25 from both of these guys. We've got x squared minus 4x and a space. Now let's go put some stuff in there. If I take, what is it, four? No, that can't be right. Let me see. 25, $2 has got eight quarters in it. Not four quarters, there we go. So if I take negative eight, divided by two, makes negative four, and square that makes 16. I'm just completing the square. 
I know some of you guys get mad when I don't write that stuff off to the side, but I mean, you should have done the completing the square work first. Over here, we're going to divide four by two, which is two, and then square that, which we get four. Now we got to translate those to this other side. What is that, 16 really? Well, it's really 16 times 25. And what is that really? Plus 400. Yikes. Now we've got this four. Oh, just add four to both sides. Nope. This isn't a four, it's a negative four. Minus four. Yikes. So I think all together on that side, let's see, negative 375 plus 400 should be 25 is equal to y plus 2 squared. And over on this side should be x minus 4 squared with a 25 on front. And then divide everything by 25. These 25 canceled out. We've got x minus 4 squared over 1, really, minus y plus 2 squared over 25 is equal to 1. That means if I were to graph this bad boy, it would be at 4, negative 2. From there, I would move over 1 on the x, 5 on the y's, make my box, draw my asymptotes. and then determine whether it goes side to side or up and down. This is side to side because X is before that minus sign. And we try to make our curve so that it gets as close to those asymptotes before it starts curving out. Don't make it too short in here and just point you straight out that way. There you go, toughy, right? Well, now you get to try the stuff that's on the very back. Now I'll have answers for you before you are completely on your own. So this is like the step before that. Give it a shot. It's the next page. I'll be right back. Like you won't even realize I'm gone. You'll just be like, boop, boop, I'm right back. <laughs> See, told you, right back. Bam, take a look. There's your graph for number one. Should be right up in here, ding. Those two bad boys. Feel free to, uh, especially if you think I've gotten this wrong, I've gotten messages from kids telling me, no, Mr. Beal, it's not like this, it's like this. I do mess these things up from time to time. You know, it happens. Have it in class all the time. There you go, remember these are side to side, those are side to side -ies. This is a side to side -y. The next two are up and downs. You got a little bit more work to them too. There's your up and down. And then this one has all that sweet work. Mmm completing the square all over the place. You may be looking at this one and thinking to yourself, wait a second, how did he know to put the Y first? Easy, it was positive. Positive one's gonna go in the front, negative one's gonna go in the back. That means the X squared has to go in the back. If they were somehow uh, both negative or if the negative one was in front here, I'd need to move it to the back for a hyperbola. Mm. There you go. I hope that was enough time to check all of your answers. You know, it's okay to pause too. Otherwise, guys, you know what I say. It's time to wrap it up. Stay safe out there. Go crazy.